that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So um, with code boards, they will give you a problem, and the objective is that you try to solve it, but you also want to see if you can't solve it more elegantly. So like when you hit submit, it will run a series of the test sheets, and if you're passing all the tests, then you can officially submit the problem, and you can see the way that everyone else in cohort has done the problem, and how good or bad your solution is compared to everyone else's, right? Because um, there are many that will work. Um, but if you hit it and you pass all the tests, and you're like, this is this is passing, but I think it could be better, then you can refactor it right then before you tell it like you have your final solution. Uh, so the way that we're going to do it is we're just going to rotate in people, and the person that's at the keyboard, they can make some decision in the matter, but their job is mainly to type, and everyone else, it's your job to tell them what they should be typing, and maybe if you have a different opinion from someone else, that's okay. Um, so, so that's sort of the idea of mob programming in a nutshell, and depending on how quickly we solve these problems, we'll either have it be each person solves a problem before we rotate, or maybe each person solves a couple of problems. Yeah, so we just start you with. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so let's see what it gives. It's telling you what your problem can be. Did you read it? Disemvowel trolls. And it gives it right here again. So, trolls are attacking your comment section. A common way to deal with this is to remove all vowels of the trolls' comments, neutralizing the threat. Your task is to write a function that takes in a string and returns another string with all the vowels removed. For example, this website is for losers, lol should be this website is really wrong. I, I don't know oh. that I actually say that, but you can read it. You might want to, I don't know if you can magnify that. Even more? Probably not. Yeah, that's... Can everyone read that? No. So... Yeah, that's going to be a little tight. Do you want to be our first guinea pig since you're... Our sure. Guinea. So, somebody suggests some Python code that we will write. So far we've Should got a depth. Do you throw ideas or a specific code? Either way. Either way. Yeah. You could e we could either string together a bunch of you know, re string replace things. Right now, things all we've or... got is the function definition and the return, returning yep. the exact same string. So, so like, why not make just an array where the value of the vowels and then parse the rest of the code with the string and see if, it's, if any of those letters are in any way? Okay. Let's see. Vols. Is there like a feature or something here built in function that um, we can use to build these um, letters? And well, I don't, I don't know that. So um, uh, here's a question: Is there, is there something where you can do like character substitution? Um, right. There, because, there like, is. You could, like, you could substitute a character that is a vowel with a non-character. So, uh, there, there's, there's two ways that come to my mind of uh, doing this, and is I'll, is we can quickly code up your example of yeah. creating a list of vowels, and if that character is a vowel, we don't include it. Yeah. There are a couple different ways you could do that. I figured you just... You could also start. use uh, regex. To yeah, get rid of it? Yeah. Um, I figured that you just um, build up the string again as you're parsing through the string and you add it as not an end to the list of then you don't have it. Okay. We can do that solution. Uh, I think it's just uh, calling recursively the same function, just taking out the, the vowel. Finding the vowel, removing um, the vowel, right, plus calling the calling call again the the recursively the recursively the same function 
until that is equal to the, the length of the computer is equal to that break the, the loop. Well, uh, it, that would prob that would work too. May, maybe uh, we, there there's a better control flow than introducing a break into this because we we have a certain set that we that we have available. So instead of doing like a, a going through and then breaking, you could do something like for character and string. So, so you you never have to worry about the break; it does it automatically. Here's something that I, I really don't know. How does the regular expression actually work? So. Regular expressions, it's, uh, it depends on the language. The expensive part of a regex is the compile. But once it's compiled, it's, just, it's as fast as regular code, and in certain cases, faster. Because yeah. the regular expression will work for that, so I just, I don't know how fast the regular expression is as a string or number. We also don't know exactly what kinds of strings users are, are in the test in case it's not one. Yeah. Down you can, you can you see the test. Yeah. yeah, this is the only thing that it has given to us. It's possible that there are others in the background. Once you, but once you try it, you'll start to see like, what test it's going through. It has yeah. like a, a smaller test suite that it, uh, it would use when, uh, until you do like the final. But you actually can add your own test as well. So like right now, there's a sample test in there. Mm, okay. You could add in whatever you want. Uh, do we want to, do we want to see what a bunch of different examples look like or would we just want to try one and move well, on? Well, so, so the way that this works is that when you hit the attempt button, it'll run, like you can hit run sample test, which is like a smaller set, or you can hit attempt, which is the whole test set. And then once you hit attempt and everything has gone through, it will ask you, are you making this your final solution? And if you are, then you can hit that button. If not, you can run through and like code it a totally different way and keep going. Okay, so let's just do one at a time. Let's do one way first. I think a few times we like control S or save it because it tries to do the output for you. Try that. So let's let's start with the listing the vowels method. No, it doesn't. That's difficult to know. Um, I, I guess it would be if there's no other. Is that the. But is it. It so If there's no other vowels in the word, then why is the vowel? Like in the word why, W H Y, why you use a vowel? Yeah, I don't know if we have to test for that case or not, but when we run the test after doing this base case, we will know if they care about um, no, sometimes why. <laughs> language. <laughs> so let's try build, uh, let's have this first one uh, instead of. Yeah, it's just like trying to remember, I think there is a uh, constant yes. variable in Python that returns the, the open memory characters, like a list, but there, there is one. Thing there is. Always. Uh, it, you specify it using the ASCII integer range. I'm, I'm forgetting the exact thing offhand, but I, I have had to use that before for some really obscure characters. <laughs> so let's try this for the buildup. So we have a list of vowels and we have new string that we're going to add things into it. So let's say uh, for character in string, uh, it doesn't automatically undo my tabs. Tab spaces. No, I mean, this editor is not a language specific <laughs> editor. That's true. That's actually something I've used code wars a few times before. I've used some of the other, like, sort of challenges a few times before. I can't remember which one it is, but one of them handles uh, the spacing absolutely tremendously. Well, um, a lot of people prefer exorcism as, as one that they would use, like, on their just because it pulls down to your local and it's like it was in the GitHub and so whatever your 
local environment is for that language, then you get to use it. But like for the purposes of dealing with the plan of work, it, that can, that's like a little too much setup. I just I remember I, it may it, we'll find out in a second here. It might be this one, but you'll like do the taps, and it'll still tell you that all your taps are wrong. And I found it just easier to go into a different text editor and do it, and then copy and paste it. Yeah. You want to explain to people what you just did? Okay, so this one is we're going uh, we're building up the string, a new string from scratch. We've listed off our vowels all in lowercase create a new string that we're going to build, and then for character in a string, because... Yes, the original string. Uh, in Python, because it's so it's uh, built right on top of C, it, uh, you can think of strings just as a list of characters, and that's exactly what it's doing here. Then we say, if the lowercase character is not in vowels, we go ahead and add it into the new string, and then return new string. Attempt. Uh, I wouldn't have really attempted. Oh, uh, so run, yeah, sam there, run sample test. The test suite is really small for this one. Oh, yeah, it um, is. So, what were those tests? Those you know, well, let's see. Let's see if it has a printout. Uh, yeah, you know, I think there's another way to get a test. Yeah, so print out the test suite. Oh, yeah, so, run, run, okay, this is a sample. And if we run attempt, it will show the entire test suite. Yeah. Oh, there's there's a Y in there on the bottom, so it's not consi it doesn't well, count Y as a vowel. Not, it doesn't. So that's not a Y that's a vowel. No, it's not. But there, I don't. There are none. There are no tests where Y is the vowel. No. Order. Which, so for the purposes of the tests that they have given us. I mean, it's it's one of it's on like the easiest level, so that's probably why. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't make people, um, so do we want to do it another way? Uh, let's try it a different way. Do we, do we, uh, do let's do, let's do the regex. Regex. What level is this? This is the this is like the first level. Um, this is just after the tutorial stuff. Yeah. So we do is like tutorials, which is like. But but so if you this, see. Yeah. Uh, well, we yeah, have they, we click mid range. They use that for their internal info. Everyone, when you start out, you start out at the bottom, and then based on like how many challenges you complete, then you can move up to the next level. But there's a lot of challenges at each level, like more than it takes to move up. So if we didn't want to do this one, we could have skipped it. Um, so that's kind of how the how the system works. So after you go through It will tell you. So, like right now, it says our rank is eight K Y U, and I think it's we problem. And so, like this one, this problem difficulty is seven K Y U. Um, so it's like within our range of things that we should know how to complete. It's been a little while since I've used regex, but I think that should work. Uh, it, uh, in well, actually, uh, for that, it, I think not including you use this the char character. What the square brackets in regex means is anything matching uh, in here. Uh, that the, the yeah, if it matches any of the characters in there. Or any character. Yeah. Yeah, so like that. Oh, so that's that that's not actually part of the regex. This is uh, so we import the library, the regex library RE, that's part of core python, and then we compile the regex expression that we're going to use. Oh, okay. Yeah, the square bracket gives you something. Like these, um, the, um, the list of values, the way this is written, A, I, O, B, and so forth. You also use um, parentheses.
Okay, I, I see what you're getting right now. So it, you use them very much uh, similar how you do in code. So let's say in our regex, we are going to match anything that is A through Z or lower A through Z or that matches this, uh, I think, and is still that in regex. I'm blanking on it. Uh, that is kind of a terrible way of doing it, but parentheses sh uh, act, they, they just act as a, the grouping without you know, saying anything inside. So that's our previous one. Now the regex is doing all of the heavy lifting for us. So I believe all we need to do is, oh, we can get rid of, well, well no, let's keep it this right? Well, well, yeah, we're still just passing in the string, but this uh, this is not like, functional programming. You make that global. That this is yeah, this is technically a global variable. If you uh, want it, if you want to be super pep eight on it, then maybe you capitalize it. But yeah, this uh, is if you okay. living in the functional world. No, you wouldn't do that in Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I'll turn it. Functional? We can de we can declare it inside yeah, of here. In Ruby, you would, you but would but the but yeah yeah the well what we're do well it's actually advantageous in Python to not do it in a functional way like this because uh, the expensive part is com is compiling. And so you only have to compile it once when the when the uh, that file is imported, as opposed to and then it, and then it just runs every single time. Yes. As opposed uh, as opposed to compiling every single time that the function yeah. runs. Exactly. This time and this version, we're just compiling once. Uh, we don't even have to include the compile at all. Uh, another thing about Python is that because it's not uh, strongly typed, the sub method for our, uh, actually I think I need to do, the first thing is string. So, uh, so we give it the string that we want we give it either the regex string, which it will compile, or we can give it a pre-compiled regex, and then what we want to replace it with to substitute. So, the global substitution method is just built into the language. So you just put string dot gsub, and then like the regular expression, and then the uh, empty uh, characters. That is the whole thing. And here, there's uh, there's a different way instead of building up. If we have all of our if we have our vowels, and then we also include the uppercase of all of our vowels, we can do for character in string uh, string dot uh, 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 new string equals string dot replace yeah. vowel with empty string, and it. be able to do that. That's good. Yeah. So it has that. We just okay. didn't do the other one that way. And this is just using regex, so we don't have to explicitly create a list of all of our things. We've just done it with a regex. So let's see. Error. I probably just have to look up the documentation for sub. What was the dollar sign? It won't let me. Hmm? That dollar sign that you put in there wasn't called Did I include a dollar sign? Uh, you just showed an example of something else and it had a dollar sign. Oh, that was an S. Yeah. yeah, it won't let me go down, but it's definitely. Uh, oh, it's in the wrong order, I think. 
Let, let's quickly do a little Google search. I'll make it. I'll make the web page bigger. I think I actually. I think it's actually replaced, not sub. Going into the Python docs. Matching characters, repeating things, error. I think it's just, uh, nope, there's match. Search group. Where are you? So, uh, here's replace. So it is. Oh, oh, okay. I see what's going on. I'm being ridiculous here. So we we create our compile. We don't have to actually give it this. We just call instead of re dot. Is it sub or? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bet this doesn't yeah, return it doesn't return anything. Oh no, I think it just does it in, it changes it in place. You don't want to, um, no, it, the, the arguments only work for the sub of the opposite. You either have the replacement to. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. And then it returns the string, so let's undo that. Yeah, so we just put these in other order. I, there, there's nothing here that's that there's nothing there's nothing here that would be that pep eight or any kind of style guides would apply to <coughs> it's just however the person would rather program it Passing tests. So now we're ready to submit. Yeah. 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 Like if 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 we want to just remove all of this yeah. and just get this. It's not technically one line, but the function would be one line. Because we're still importing the library and creating a thing. Uh, Although I can show you in a second. Probably regex. Yeah, as long as you only compile it once, it's pretty good. Uh, and just to give you, just to show you that this also works. Oh no! It, it never mind. It that wouldn't work for subs. Yeah. Yeah, but as far as being efficient coders, this is this is the fastest way if you know that this function is going to be called a lot. Submit final.
Well, and it's not it's not that you have to continue building up your regular expression. You can either have a series of individual regular expressions, or you can mix in your regular expression with standard replacement code. Regular expression would be my case of having the entire table to find the space in between them and create groups. Yeah, you for translate. Are we happy face, straight face, or sad face about this? Yeah. So we didn't have to do we didn't have to do a uh, list expression here, or actually, well, they just do a, a, a for loop all in one line there. What is that translate? Is that just a, a string method? Let's look it up. Is that, the whole, is that their whole solution? That is their whole solution. Yeah. That's a pretty good solution. Yeah, I find it. Even a senior level programmer, uh, programmer for a language will find new and interesting things. No, because that's a native uh, C me uh, string method. Uh, Yeah, so so they're they are. It, this is essentially string mapping. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this goes back to thinking of uh, C strings are just lists are are arrays of characters, and in Python, if you return none. Then when it goes back to join it, it just removes that index, and you're left with the string that's been removed. Or in the example here, you're replacing the character at that index, which matches whatever associated index they are. So it's it's a map, but you don't have to actually create a list for your map. You just say assume that the two strings I'm giving you, whatever is at index two, replace it at index two of the other one. So, this is the next person who wants to go up can start the next problem. What to talk about? Some value of a character with another. Uh, some, a lot of languages have math functions built in. I don't think Python has it, but other languages like Swift, C, Java. It's got to be like a library in Python that has math. Well, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, I think it's built in here, it's built into the string class, and I think it's also built into the list class, natively. No. All right, so we just want to go to the next one. For next kata. Oh, this is a six Q. Well, It's up to you guys. Yeah, yeah, I got it. If you want to specific, uh, well, if you guys want to pick specific difficulties, we can do that as well.
It's up to you guys. Yeah, and we can do this one. Yeah. It's a little character. Give it a string, and we need to return whatever individual character is in the middle of the string. And if the length is even, then we return both. So for middle, it will return both. So what do you guys also sorry, I've gotta change this up. It okay, cool. Um, I might screw up my prints every time, but Well, if we're gonna just do outputs or anything. And we're just gonna do outputs to see stuff. But um I mean it's just a space instead of parentheses, but I'll forget to do it, so Yeah, I'm on tail, I guess. Okay. So, for now, I'm just going to add that. What do you guys think? What do you think? Take your time. So get the get the length of the screen uh, the string and divide by two. Yeah. I'm All right. So. I'm that oh my god! Sorry, I'm not used to this tiny keyboard. So instead of len, uh, len is actually a uh, uh, reserved function. It's a okay. It's a global function. So you do uh, yeah, length equals. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So that's what we want to do. Um, so now we'll either get a floating point or an integer, depending on if it's even or odd. Oh, you're right. It'll actually do floor division. So if you're doing Python 3, this is the equivalent of doing double back functions. Yeah, so if we're in Python 2 and we still want to do do we want to do floor division or do we want to do actual division? Well, that's that was the other one. Yeah, if it's, so we could do uh, yeah, if len uh, or just let's do length yeah, length equals len s, right? We have a variable called length, then we can right. do uh, if len if length mod two. Technically, we we can even leave it at that because we don't have because one is true. Oh. Uh -huh. So this, this means that if yeah, so this is odd. So if it's odd, we can just return. Uh, we can actually just return. Uh, One second. S substring length divided by two. So return S substring. Yeah. Can you walk me through that one? Sorry. Uh, so sub, uh, substringing in Python is uh, brackets. It, it wants you to have like a, a range of. Oh, and then just so, do length divided by two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So we're just picking a single index that we want to return because odd. Else. Otherwise, we need to return. We need to return two. the slice, and it would still be the slice from length divided by two to the length mm -hmm. divided by two plus one, or plus two because it's exclusionary on the second one. Uh, 
um, if we only want to do the cal well, if we only want to do that calculation once, we would do it ahead of time. You know, mid equals length divided by two. Yeah. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think you meant mid. Now, for slices, is it's exclusionary on the second one, so it should be plus two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's get rid of this. So... Want to run it? Yeah, we can do the sample test first because there's like five of them. Yeah. So we'll run that. And so. Oh. No. All right. So, so st should be es, which means. We've got somehow the last word. Instead of. Well, I one thing, well, actually, just for the sake of here, why would we, out of curiosity, why would we not do mid here since we're already doing yeah. length divided by two in the if as well? Yeah, you have a point. And so I'm going to go ahead and guess that if we just subtract one from it, we're getting going to get the right one. So, um, maybe you can get rid of the definition of mid down there because otherwise, oh, yep, thanks. One of those, uh, even though I know it's more of a Python, like, let's why would you if length mod two equals one? Just on the off chance that Python two is being weird. So, if what? Weird. Say it again. Sorry. Um, in our if statement, we use equals equals. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, so I can't remember. I, I thought that the um, the single division in Python two is floor division. It, yeah, it is. In Python two, it's floor division. Mm, you know what's happening? And you know why we got st instead? I'm, it's because we're getting S, or wait, actually, why are we getting S? Huh. We know that we're returning the sentence return because it's giving us two characters. Yeah. So if there is something wrong with the range that we're giving it to. Well, if the only thing that would have given it, that, that would have returned to, is if our if statement wasn't working properly. Well, it should have it should have returned two, because it's test, so it's four characters. So four divided by two, four divided by two is it's oh because it's zero one two, because it's an array. Oh, I see. That's why it's happening. It's zero one two, not one two three four. It's zero one two three. So we gave it two, well, yeah, which would be the S. So what you were about subtracting yeah, so we do want to subtract by one. All right, so try this again. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so now we do now our even one word. We do odd one is saying S should. And we do mid plus one. So yeah, we need mid plus one because of the way that Python yeah. ranges. Yeah. Yep. It's a um, no, 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 just no, the other one. The first case. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. My bad, sorry. There we go. Yeah, let's get rid of equals equals one and just do mid plus one. Yeah, it's not necessary. It's not that. Okay, so we'll run that again. And. There we go. Now they all pass. 
So that's one pretty messy way of doing it. Does anybody have any ideas on some other ways to do it? Oh, so, all right, so there's a few things going on here. Um, one, when you look at this length equals 1s, you're getting the length of the string, but it's actually, how many so you're getting the how many characters it is. Um, however, when you get the, so then you do length divided by 2, which should give you the middle point or 1 below the middle point in the case of an even number, like so 2 divided by, or 4 divided by 2 would give you 2, and so you'd expect to get the second one. However, the way that Python does arrays, and what we're doing here is we're accessing a specific point in the array of the string that we're looking at. So it's like a um, list of the, each. Yeah, letter. I'll, I'll comment it up. Um, the way that um, Python does it is it starts counting the first one at 0. And so that subtracting 1 is to account for the fact that Python starts counting at 0. So the next, um, while you typing that up, the next line after that um, uses a percent sign. I don't know if that's really clear, so I'm wearing sitting or not. But um, have you ever seen that before? I mean, I do yeah. want to understand the general, yeah. right? So it falls with Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Right. So, so yeah, it will return a it will return a zero if you have an even number of Yes. And that's because it'll include the first one in this, but then it'll exclude the last one for the last part of the slice, um, so which is very annoying sometimes, yeah, yeah. but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Yeah. Uh, did we want to try it a different way? Or, yeah? Until you get to the last two or the last one, yeah. that would work. So, or I'll like on board with that methodology is like instead of um, yeah, like finding the middle and then like going around it, we can we can keep taking off of either end of the word until we get to either one left or like two left or one left, and or minus return. Yeah. Well, we can do that. Okay. All right, so. First thing is, I'll rewrite this. Well, that's not the right place to put that. Um, let's do it up here. So this is where we will call it again. We don't even need to. We don't need to, to define the. No, you're right. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, well, let's let's do let's have, just have our our if. Python doesn't have switch statements. So let's just do let's create our if else. So our base case that we're just going to return whatever we have already is if the length of s, s is greater less than two. two. We seem to be at the same time. What are we gonna do? Greater, less than? So, so the, <laughs> either the, or when you do the recursion. The, the first thing you usually do to cover your bases is create your base case, uh, which, the, like, okay. which is yeah, at what case, yeah. yeah, at what point yeah. do we stop? And in that case, yeah, so, case here, it's so when the best is less than two. two. And then we'll do the return. Uh, that that, that's not a thing. It's less than S. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it is a thing, but it's <laughs> 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 you can't be careful with that. Recursion, you have to be careful with it. 
oh, you are oh, avoiding the less, case. Less than, less, less than or equal to two. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And so then we have our else statement, which is where we will call this again, and we want to do something to the string. Um, Oh, so we could do we could do it where we remove the zero area and we remove the negative one. Yep. Um, there are other ways to do it, but I'm. But that's the, that's the cleanest way to do it. Yeah. Is that the cleanest or way to do it? it? It's, actually, it says zero. You do something. Uh, so Python has a. Uh, we're going to use our same kind of some stringy thing here. So Py, uh, Python is unlike some other like a lot of other languages where you can do uh, you make it indexing. <coughs> the end of the string. So in our case here, we can do something like return s bracket one colon minus one. Yep. To just take off whatever you know, start at one from the beginning and end at one, you know, end before the beginning. And it's that is so and, fun. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One second. So that, so would it be S0 colon negative one? Oh, if we did zero colon negative one, it would, it would include the first one. Zero, the first one, so it would just end with only two. So yeah. the way this should work is if you have the word test, it should get rid of both T's. Um, because it's including one, it's including two, but then negative one is T, is the last T, so it's saying, nope, get rid of that one. So it in the first number in the range and it excludes the last number yeah. you give it in the range. In, in Python, no, yeah, no in Python range indexing, in any other language. yeah, in Python like splicing, that's exactly what it does is it includes the first one and then everything else and then for some reason it just says no to the last one. Well, it, it does that because it's, it's C. It's C okay. Well, there we go. That's the explanation. <laughs> so... I, this looks. Super advanced, you can blame C for reasons what I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> they're just passing in the C bindings. Uh, like when you call list.sort, the actual Python code for that is uh, pass the list to C's sorting library directly and just return the result. There's no Python implementation of the sort of the list of sort. Have we run the test? Nope. nope. You guys ready to run it? <laughs> well, we're calling the function again, and once uh, we get to a point where the length of the string, yeah. Once it gets to, yeah, it has to get to that interface. So the real question here is, what happens if somebody has a magical well, I guess we have a different question. Yeah. Um, I was going to say what happens if we find somebody with a word that's like 300 words long, because I think Python's recursion limit is 100, isn't it? I mean, but there's no the words. The answer is that that's more than that. I, I could be off on that one. We could, still, we could use the other method that we wrote if that were the case, but we are yeah. making an assumption based on... Yeah, it's not going to be that long. That is yeah. So none should should equal es. How are we getting to the none? Return get middle. So in the else, we need to return it. Mm. Oh yeah. So there we go. There we go. Technically, if you want, if you want to be, uh, like, well, uh, because each code block is only a single line long, you, Python allows you to put them on the same line. Yeah. And people get get all of their arms if we're both sides of that. Like, Python would do. So we we technically we wait. Is that two lines. is that the Pythonic way to do it? Doing it like this. Because I always figured this was a little more. I always figured this was a little bit more readable. Yeah. Which is what I always figured Python was about. So. Yeah, I 
typically this is what you'll see, but I've also seen I've also seen people put it on the same doing, same line. Doing that and carrying out the summary like if you're gonna be like a complete bulk note, but I do it very like Yeah, yeah. we probably could even just uh, do a single line yeah. else. So you could do return s if len ah. is le less than or equal to two oh, wow. to get the middle. Yeah. Well, part of the part of Code Wars is to like be clever and yeah, that's, that's elegant about it. Code that we yeah, have, yeah, just, but it looks it looks nice. Yeah. So let, let's actually uh, like and, yeah return s and then we just get rid of the extra line and then bring the else up. Without the cool. And now it's a single line. All right. Let's see. Yay. There we go. Yay. So we can get rid of this. Yep. Does anybody have any other ways they want to try it? Um, nope. Attempt and then submit. Attempt and submit and see how more. We haven't actually attempted. Yeah, we, we actually haven't attempted it yet. So but it, it, it passes. Let's see how uh, creative other people are. Let's do it. Not, oh, I like when the tests were creative. I was like, those are just generated. They have, yeah, when the tests. Yeah, they do, they're doing generated tests. All right. That was <laughs> the Yeah, that the list the list one is pretty good. The list comprehend the list comprehensions are surprisingly taxing on the language. Really? Well, like they they look really nice and sometimes they can save you a lot of code. But if you can if you can do something without it that doesn't that, yeah, that isn't significantly mm. longer in terms of readability. Uh, and our our recursion function would be faster than us doing the same thing with the list comprehension. Interesting. To a point. To a point. <laughs> to a point. Yeah. Cool. Oh, the uh, the one there that you see an or. Yeah. You don't you don't see a whole lot of this you know, this or that. There's not a whole lot of use cases for that kind of syntax, even though we do support it. I've used it once in programming, but it's very far and few between. Cool. Who wants to uh, go next? What was that double division? Oh. Double division slash. The double, the double division. Uh, Double division is forces integer division on uh, no matter whether if it's float or integer. In uh, in Python two, if you did single, it would all uh, unless uh, if both of them were integers, it would do integer floor division. Uh, but if either one of them was a float, it would do float division. In and if you want to force integer Four division, you had to use both. In Python three, they did a logical thing and made one so that regardless of either types, it would do floating point division. And if you did double, it would do integer floor division. In Python two, as, I'm far, as far as I'm aware, if you want to do uh, float division on integers, you have to import future or import division from future, don't you? Yeah. If you I'm well, not if sure you, of any if other. You want to, if you well, uh, if you import from future you, uh, and you want to do floating point division using the single operator mm -hmm. on integer, yeah, then you have to do it that way. Yeah. What is there another way to do that? Because that's the only way I've ever. You, you use like, Python three. Well, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> that's always a question, but. I 
right. It's not always the option, although like, uh, uh, it's one of the options. Land, AWS Lambda last week or two weeks ago finally added support for Python 3 for, you know, inside of Lambda and they use 3.6, which makes me very happy. Who wants to go next? Go for it. Go, go, go. I also found this really, this uh, neat tutorial where seven minutes, it walks you through adding new syntax to Python using the, the, act, the way that they do it and they uh, integer implementer, which is plus plus or minus minus. Next. That's a good idea. What we're going to do? Yeah, let's try that. Uh, S. I think you want to Oh, right, right. Sorry. My oh, bad. We do, yeah, we can do x equals s dot lower. We yeah, that's fine. The original. Not all languages allow you to overwrite the variable that are given to you. Yeah, it gives us a lot easier. Where is that there? Use case for it. No, never. <laughs> I actually have a good use case for it because uh, I have functions that work with date time. And if uh, you can, you can either take a date time string or a date time object, and it goes, "Hey, I need it to be a date time object." If type, uh, if type equals string, convert into a date time object, and then I'll answer this before. Oh, yeah, no, no. yeah. It's not 
fast or efficient, but it's good. Here we have XO equals s dot layer. So then we can uh, we can instead of returning true. Uh, well, we're going to eventually have to return a boolean. So like well, we can leave that. We, well, well, we I, no, we can, yeah. no, we can do it on the same line. Yes, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so on the return line, it would be XO dot count string x equals equals uh, XO dot count. Oh, the character. Yeah. Yeah. And then equals equals, and then same thing again, but with the list case of. Huh? So you can so you can do x o dot count now. X o oh. Because that's what you named your variable. Um, it has like the whole lowercase string, right? And so um, you do x o dot count again. So this time we're counting the number. Wow, that's so simple. So we're just asking, like, are these two numbers that we're getting back for this equal? And then if it is, then it will return true, and otherwise it will return false. Uh, we don't need that extra throughout the That was just a filler. Could you have put it in one line where um, XO dot if S S dot lower dot count X equal S dot lower and dot you, count? You can either duplicate the dot lower call if we, mm -hmm. uh, but if we didn't want to do that, there technically is a way that we could use it on the same line. Uh, we could do return uh, with s dot lower as xo colon and then the next little line. I mean, you could also like have a, a case line. where you count lowercase and uppercase x. Right? So lowercase and uppercase. There are many ways to do it. Uh, all, all of them honest, are honestly, it's not really worth it. Not super clean. Let's try. It, so with, uh, we want to try it, try it this way is uh, with f stop lower as xo. So uh, as xo, and then it's uh, as. So. so xo colon, and then get rid of the xo equals at the front. Yeah, and get rid now, of the, the second core, line. To the left. Line two. So, so up, up one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then get rid of the xo. This is less efficient, right? It's uh, well. It's this is this is how we can give the a lowercase string with that phrase on a single line. Uh, it might even just be complaining that it's on a single line, or it, well, it's probably complaining that we're using width on a return uh, and return on the same line. So yeah, that that's not gonna work. What what yeah. you use this. Uh, the width for 
is to say, I am going to declare a variable, but I only want it to be in scope in the following code blocks. So if you're working with file, if you usually see this with file objects. Because file objects, you either do uh, fin equals uh, open some file, fin equals this. I, I've used I've used that guarantee yeah. before. Um, you either like with file objects, you have to open it, you do a thing, and then you have to call you know, fin.close. close. With does the open and close on class objects with uh, the special uh, class uh, class functions. But what it does is it will clean up whatever that function is. It calls the the deconstructor or destructor for that object so that rather than having, say, a two gigabyte file open, so for your entire code block, it's open up a two gigabyte file, get the data out that I need, so close it, it, and then it's you can do work. Also, I know it's Chris. So as long as Chris can create the object and the error. Yeah. So, Mitch? For some reason in the back of my head, I feel like it wasn't required to have it in there. I don't know. I was down with the error. So me too. I, I was just remembering some random stuff in my record about the error. So I'm like, what's all this fine? And then I remember it's a counter patch error. It's like, no, I don't have any files. I don't doubt it. But ever since I started opening files, I didn't have files in there. Yeah. This is what I was talking about, the second one. Hey, would you look at that? We, they use their exact same code. They copied us. Yeah. <laughs> the second I'm, one was what I was asking about. I'm filing a claim. Yeah, and then the one at the bottom, they just called lower again. So, mm. yay. <laughs> okay, who's next? Next up. My, my, my. <laughs> it's too okay, quick. we're all working on it together. Oh, too quick. <laughs> if, you, if you really don't like it, there's actually a skip button. Yeah. No, it's not a skip. I need Good. to learn. I don't uh, want to learn. We've already, we already skipped one earlier that we didn't like, so it, it's okay. If you no, want but I, I want to learn it. This one isn't necessarily doing a, a Python language thing. It's given this problem to find the, the, the calculation. Let's skip it like we did the other math thing. Skipping. So the like down at the bottom there is a skip button underneath the race. sample test. Yeah. Keyboard race. Uh, race. Race. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that particular one, it was race not implemented error, and you have that for uh, say you're working on a, a bit of code that you're letting a result review for your your getting ready to use, and you say. Hey, there's this function. Da, 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 da. Oh wait, they haven't actually did this yet, and so it will raise an error and error out whatever the code is. So this is a, a little bit mathy, but it also seems like it's pretty easy to understand. I'm signing it to zero in the place, which means the number of loops is the text of the zero in the string. Do we have to import bit 64 somewhere? Do I do we have to import the bit module? Mike, I, it, it, 
you want to, uh, do you want to? I don't know. Do you know, I, know. So I, I think, I think the first thing that we have to answer is like, we want to find a method that's already out there to convert the base 10 number to binary. Yeah, that would be, that would be a good um, first that, that would be like the easiest first pass is to not write our own method for anything. So, so the, either open up a new tab or uh, let's, let's start a new one. Or should we go to the Python engine binary? The big question is the You want to import? No import. It's standard library. In the function, do, uh, do we want to just uh, do we want to see what bin the bin we can do? Or in three, we can do uh, print bin n and then just run our tests and see if they output correctly. Yeah, return the end. We need to put the parentheses around the print bin, or uh, put the print bin. Oh, yes, Python 3. You do return? Uh, we, the, uh, not for now. We need to get rid of the space. We need to get rid of the space between print in the print. And the parentheses to be that space in between the word print and it's the just like column calling the function. function. Oh, you want to print? What's about that? That. Yeah. Because a 
it takes two bits to represent the number four, but they're saying it equals one. one. Well, it's it's asking for it's not asking for any bits or five, so it's asking for how many times you have. Oh, oh, I thought it was asking for the number of bits. Oh, yeah, I thought the number of bits. So now that we've got this string, we can and use we, count again. We, yeah. So we can take the sum string of it and just count uh, the, the character one. And actually, you don't care because if it starts with zero, B has a number one. Oh, that's a lot easier. So we, I think we can just put in the return uh, bin n dot count one. And yeah, that should work. And that count. It probably has to be string one. Yeah, it has to be yeah, one. Yeah, so parentheses. And yeah, yeah, that's right. Not count. We have parentheses. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I bet there's some really bizarre mathematical variable in this. You want to find out in two seconds? Like the top one will be some crazy thing. It's a good thing that they didn't ask for zero because then you have to do minus yeah, one. Then you would have to actually do it. They, what they would, you could always just do the whole minus one and just go back to the first one. That you want to have to move the bit oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like two times, so it's not that much. <coughs> um, so I think you just have the, for example, if you have like uh, zero, one, zero, you don't like that with it. So zero, zero, one. So, you have like that. so they basically are like, like you're taking. Each one. This is what this one move to the right. This one move to the right. This one move to the right. Okay. Now look. That's an interesting comparison. That's an unnecessarily complicated. This one is different than the other ones. They're doing a for loop on this one. Where do I click on here? Uh, scroll on the top of the page. There's uh, the next Kata. Add tag. <coughs> I 
I'm clicking on it. Are you like, are you tap clicking or are you solely screaming? I tried both. Oh, I'm going to try it again. <laughs> You guys want to skip this one? Basically, any string with characters A through M is, is a good string. Is that what it's saying? Unnecessarily complicated to set up the problem, but the function is exact. This, is, this is another one of those regex, really yeah. easy to solve. So maybe maybe we could get there. Yeah, we, we've, we've done it. We've done a lot much of simpler manipulation. Do you just want to do a quick lift off or anything? Maybe we just skip it. <laughs> Could we want to do things like sinks or fire things or something? So that if someone wants to allow someone to put a sink in someone's hand, like you can, one, you can be able to select how many specifically you can write in and two, you can actually preview your spell and have them put it in the sink. Okay. So So how do we do that? Um, I like think what you want to do is you want to go to Kata. Since we selected only one language that we like, oh, never mind, um, we didn't, but language, Python, and do you guys want to just go with a 6Q, I guess? Or I guess we can select multiple. No. Right. Is the lower the number, like the higher? Yeah, the lower like? the number, the harder it is. Um, so we can select whatever we want, but these are the ones that all have Python included. And maybe one nice thing about this is like, if you see a question that has like ten different languages on it, it might not include like the cool Python stuff where you kind of want to include it. Yeah. Okay. about this one? Well, I don't know. Python has a reverse function, right? Two. Two? Yeah, we'll do 
stop reverse to do a little complaint and then reverse, which is a standalone function that returns a copy. Array, chop it into len divided by three, uh, len divided by n components, and then reverse each with the same name and all that together. That's fine. Also, if you look at the second example, uh, the last one. An array of arrays. I don't remember how to do that. A two dimensional array? I, I'm thinking in my head of a way that we could put this on a single line. First thing that we can do is let's say we use a list use a list comprehension. You guys are gonna have to help me with that one. The array is split into two pairs digits. So yeah, there yeah. is a index group and reverse that, and yeah. then you return to the plus, but all those, all of that in one line. So return 34 well, lines. Do do the first two reverse yeah. plus the call the gain set reverse with the rest of the array. So what would our base case be? Our base case should be if the length is in the Yeah, 
Whoops. Less than or equal to? Is this what you meant? Yes. Okay. But then there is something that is very dangerous that is the ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Because if you make it well an uh, array to something, it means that you cannot modify the, the, the copy. The copy will be the, the original. Yeah. You have basically make that copy, make call the function copy. A new object. Yeah. So it that's that's for things like uh, referencing lists, uh, lists, dictionaries, and classes. Anything that gets put on the heap, or yeah, anything yeah. that gets put on the heap, you have to call copy or heap copy on. If any anything that gets put on the stack, you're fine. You know what we do in Ruby? We don't care about we it. We use an exclamation point. <laughs> There's like they're called they're called bang methods, and so it's like the dot um, dot reverse in itself is like not destructive, but if you use dot reverse with an exclamation mark, then you really mean it, and you're gonna mistake the array. Where would we put the copy on here before reversed? Well, we're not dealing with it. No. Okay. Here. I mean like this? Yeah. Where would, would it be like this? R? R, yeah. Okay. Two, two. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Two L. Different. Follow. No, no, no. It's another side, sorry. And you're called self. Uh, I feel you're doing uh, now you, you, oh, but 
just this? Okay. So, whoops. That's it. Convert the array to a list? No, no just so where it's where it's the first one. Okay. And that's like this, right? By yeah. 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 Same with the Does it stop itself? Which test? <laughs> For number four. Four. Oh, let's do if uh, let, we can just do uh, its own if statement there. So yeah, we can turn uh, we can turn that if into an Ella. Or we'll add this one down here. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll do if L if L. So it'll reverse the whole thing anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's try to let's run the same test. Some, maybe people from Google or something. <laughs> there, there's another. There are people who will do their darndest to say, I'm going to fit everything on the one line, <laughs> even if it means it's even less readable. Uh, there are times when, it's, when having things on a single line is insanely readable. This is not one of them. And the, and the kind of thing that I'm saying. Most of the answers, though, are putting these like for loops that are nested on a single line. 
And this wouldn't be Pep 8, right? This is, this is Pep 8. Yeah. Compliant. Or actually, no, I think it would it would bump into the uh, some people take as gospel a character when it's compliant. There is something a little more readable. Yeah, it's a little more readable. So they're doing. Oh, so they're doing. Uh, they're doing sub, not substream. They're, they're indexing, but in Python, you can do min, uh, min, max, step inside of your your indexing. So instead of calling list reversed, they're doing up. They're doing minus one. Right. With everything in the list. Are useful is when people are in readability. <laughs> so it is now. It is eight fifty seven. That is that is the last that is, one. That is it. I have exhausted my my brain. So we don't know what we're going to have as our meetup topic for next month. So if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see, let us know. Um, or if you would like to give a presentation, let us know. What you agree with us like uh, make like a simple perception. Actually, funny, fun that you mention it. I just put this up on Saturday. I, I posted a project uh, or a more formal report from my presentation at Code Camp that is all about using facial recognition with OpenCV. Right, so the, this this function is we're taking in an existing model that does face detection. So there's a picture with some faces and it spits out bounding boxes for us. And then I go through taking, uh, oh, and then comparing it to a commercial service Microsoft's face API. Uh, and then I use that function to build a training corpus of faces <coughs> that are of me and not of me. So faces not of me. Faces of me, and create use Keras to build a neural network, train it on a very small data set, and then it's where's Michael? So this is an image it's never seen before that has myself, Casey, and a very charming uh, statue of a manatee. Here's a single function. It takes in an image and it returns was it found in the bounding box. And there you go. And here's the exact same thing, training and function for Microsoft's Space API. And they did a pretty good job. And that I am not Casey. <laughs> That's kind of fun. That's on my website, and all the code is on GitHub. Uh, yeah, found it kind of fun. Uh, oh, website is mdupont.com. It is my Slack username, plus.com. Super useful homepage. I updated it two years ago, and it's just going to stay that way for a long time. Yeah. So yeah, we are looking for things for next month, and yeah, it seems going month by month seems to be working pretty well, and people seem to like this live coding thing. 
so we'll probably continue it. If you have a library or a topic that you really want to have a live coding session for, let us know on the Python Slack channel or message us in Meetup. We had Flask the previous two times, so we create our own web application. We can. Uh, yeah, it is similar. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, yeah, if you, if you wanted to do some kind of live coding with us with Django, we would love that. That would be awesome. Yeah, because we, yeah, we did Flask, and that's just a micro, ver it's a micro framework. Django is the everything included Rails, you know, Ruby on Rails in yeah. Python kind of thing. Um, also, is everybody aware what we're saying when we talk about Flask? Yes, but I'm wondering with the Slack channel, where is what's There's the Slack a, channel? That, that's what I meant. So okay. a Slack team for Orlando developers. Orlando devs. That for the, uh, yeah, but if you go to Orlando devs, if you Google Orlando devs, then you can do, like, get an invite to the They have that on there now? Um, so go on Google. To the Google. Oh. Or, like, at least if you uh, can Google Orlando devs. I think it's just orlandodevs.com. Oh, dash, dash slack. Okay. Is it, um, I think on here it says, like, get join, on slack. Join our slack. See the second, the middle button? Yeah, or get on slack. I, either one of those two. So it kind of tells you um, email. To email Orlando Dev Community at gmail.com if you want an invitation to the slack team. Or, not in or find any of us and we can do request I mean, invite. You, you switch too quickly. But, yeah, I mean, we have a. It's just to keep recruiters out. So ba basically, the rules are like, don't be a jerk. But you'd be surprised at how many people can't follow that rule. Basically. Actually, if you scroll down, it says be kind. Don't, don't be, be a jerk. jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like, be kind, be helpful to beginners. No recruiters. recruiters. Yeah, we don't we don't like recruiters. But like there there's also um, so you can decide what channels you want to join. But um, just so you know, there's like there are channels on there like job listings and stuff too. Where um, you know sometimes jobs in the area don't even make it beyond our Slack. So like a formal job search would be quickly to find people looking for opportunities and see if you want to join developers. Also, for because I, we are recording this, I just want to say if some if some lovely recruiters want to sponsor the meetup, we would totally love you, but we don't want them in the Slack. Oh. <laughs> I, I can tell you about a really interesting message that I have from somebody about like sponsorship of a single meetup where they want us to like go drink wine and somehow also have a Python meetup at a place that is not like. We, we want you to have a, a code meetup in the Beecham or something, wherever. I get the impression the person who sent this out has no, has no idea what a Python meetup is. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Um, what else is good in Orlando Dev? The Python channel is the best channel. Um, it is. We were talking, yeah. oh, here's the, this is actually a link to the, uh, how to modify the Python language on your computer. It steps you through how to add the plus plus and minus minus incrementer decrementer to the to integers. Uh, and if you want, if you wanted to test adding a feature to co the core Python language before you implement, you know, before you do a pep, you th that's how you would do it, and that's how people implementing your pep would do it as well.
Especially companies that are data companies or have a data team, yeah. Python is one of the uh, big three data science languages. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, typically dealing with R, uh, yeah, Matlib, and Python. A University of Central Florida SAS. actually, they're, one of their learning online learning platforms is a data based app, and so there's a lot of folks doing Python down there. They're the Orange County Tourism website is a Flask application. So, so yeah, there is um, there is Python around here. I don't know if you're looking for that specifically, um, but there's also um, some loan opportunities as well for Python. Um, some some people are working on it in Python, <laughs> but not too remote. Python from remote home. Still in Florida. If you're looking for, I, I there. I mean, it's if you're looking for it, the biggest community in Orlando for sure. Um, there are some cities organizing national go Python and do things like this. So I mean, we are not that, but um, if there's opportunity there, if you are set on doing a Python project, yeah. The and uh, I, I see a lot of uh, job postings for NBC and the Golf Channel because. Their core applications are built on Python, their core web applications. There are some, uh, mark, uh, was it ad, ad companies and scientific instrument companies also use a lot of Python. I've, I have seen a lot of <coughs> job postings from those kind of companies as well. Oh, uh, I, and I was trying to thought, Tampa has a lot of. Python jobs as well. I actually traveled down to Tampa, the Tampa Python group almost uh, almost two months ago now. Uh, and that leads me to my current thought. We have a set date for a uh, date and location for Orlando PyCon, or not Orlando PyCon, Florida PyCon. It's going to be here in the exchange building. We have the main foyer, the Iron Yard, Canvas, and Power DMS the first Saturday of October. And we have people coming in from all over the state. So, we uh, we we're working through all of our you know, all the plans and everything, but we will eventually have links to submit talks and workshop ideas and all of that. Speaking about Python and Tampa, if you're interested. Tampa also has a Slack for their developers, and it's called Suncoast Developers, um, and so you can you can join that stuff as long as you. Uh, I think you can put like a direct invite. So they they have their own little job listing account. Yeah, it's called Suncoast Developers Guild, and you would come up if you search Suncoast.io. Uh, the very first thing. Yeah, 
and the Python, if you're looking for jobs, the Python uh, opportunities in Tampa are a little are a little better than Orlando, and a lot of companies uh, also offer remote work. So you can, you know, if you really want to, you can stay in Orlando. You can work in Python remote, and maybe once a week or a couple times a month, you drive an hour and a half over yeah, over to the office. And while we're talking about Slack channels, I would highly rec uh, we don't have a great URL for this because we're still testing it, but uh, you can always join Code for Orlando. So we work on a bunch of uh, bunch of civic oriented projects. And the Heroku app is we have we have yes we have a Python project that launched about a month and a half ago, two months ago. It's an automatic FOIA requester that I wrote running on Lambda. The idea is that the city has data. It has public data, but it's you have to form you have to make a formal request for that data. And even though the city has an open data portal, did you know the city has an open data portal? They don't update it a whole lot. <laughs> and the 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 word from the guy who uh, who heads it up. Uh, is whenever we see a data set that gets requested by a lot of people and frequently, we will uh, they'll add it into the open data portal and update it on a regular basis. So I created a script that says, I'm going to make a request every four weeks, however you want to configure it for the exact same description and data, and it will just keep churning it out as long as you're not too egregious with it, like making a request every two days. Then uh, you get data back and eventually, hey, we're getting this exact same request. Let's add it to the data portal. So that's the goal there. But it's written in Python. It's running on Lambda. And I need to update it from 2 to 3 because Python 3 is better and they just added support for 3.6. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's... Uh, Actually, I'm going to use the website. We just started rolling this out two, um, a month ago. But, is, yeah, so this is, if you want to go to the site, it's not really ready yet, but it's cfo brigadehubhorokuappcom Yeah. Yeah, it's, That's it's really great. This will be easier. Uh, there's bit.ly slash CFO Slack to get into the Slack channel, and we have a GitHub organization, github.com slash cforlando. So yeah, if you see any project on there that has been, uh, like it meets, what, twice a month now that you're doing Linux architecture? Yeah, twice a so, month. So if you see code that's been updated within the last month, then you can pretty much assume there's probably still a Uh, Brigade Hub. Yeah, it, we're, we will eventually have a better link to it because we're still testing it out, and the web, uh, the web application for that is cr currently in beta, being made by one of the guys at Code for San Francisco, and we are, you know, we're, uh, we're helping them debug it and getting it ready for its stable release. What is the So that on meetup, meetup.com slash code hyphen for hyphen Orlando. Hey. Yeah, this. Thank you. Thank you for your help with your There we go. Yeah. Here's code for Orlando. We have. Uh, we always have the first Tuesday of the month over here in downtown Canvas, and we also have a second one at Winter Park Canvas the Monday, two weeks following whenever the first Tuesday is. And for people who don't know, Winter Park Canvas is like one street over um, from Park Avenue and Park Design, the corner of New York and Knights. Yeah. 
It's the attached to the same parking lot that the Sunrail station is on. All sorts of info. Yeah, they take it. They're gonna be kicking us out soon, or we're gonna be kicking ourselves out soon. So, but it's my birthday, and I want to go get a beer before I go home. Go get your beer. <laughs> and I'm going to stop the stream. I, I learned that I can't get a beer before I go home.